Dogecoin looks like it's breaking out to the downside right now. In my last video, I was watching on the four hour time frame. I was watching resistance, 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 and then we had support, support, giving me a bottom and a top. And it looks like we're breaking the bottom right now. In this pattern, it's kind of like a channel pattern, uh, a broadening channel, I guess you could call it. You would drag from the top to the bottom of the channel, drag this to the breakout. And I'm looking at a target of approximately .12979. The other target and limit order that I've been looking at for a long time is this previous bottom down here at around .12727. You could argue that it wicked all the way down to around .12276. So it's possible that a limit order could be good there. But this is the level that I'm targeting because it's kind of a, it's where the bodies are touching the, it's where the bodies end, should I say. And so yeah, we're getting a nice little breakout. We're getting a nice little volume candle. Let's see how far it continues to break to the downside. The other thing that I was watching is okay. So we're on the, the, the we're on the four hour time frame. In my last video, I was watching the one hour. We actually came down, hit that 14 cents, got a nice little bounce to the upside, and then what I was saying is we could watch this trend right here. We had support, support, giving me an uptrend. We came up and then we pretty much came right back down, broke that trend line to the downside, kept getting red candles. And the other thing that I had been watching is this resistance and this resistance or that area, should I say, actually it was just this line right here. Let's go ahead and draw that back up, something like that. And then we also had the bottoms, something like this. We came up came up, to, um, broke above this channel pattern. Um, I was targeting from the top to the bottom of the channel, dragging this to the breakout. I was saying that could be the next area. We pretty much came basically up to that level. And then right after that, broke down, <laughs> broke down or, or started trending down, broke the trend line, should I say, and then broke this top um, previous resistance that could sometimes turn into support, broke that and then broke this other support that I was watching down here, broke that going to the downside, and then now we're breaking that bigger trend on the four hour time frame. So um, yeah, like I said, I think the next spot that we could look for is .12979. Um, let's go to the four hour time frame. Let's go to the daily time frame. It looks like we're getting more farther away from that moving average. Let's go ahead and delete everything. As I've been talking about, the farther away from the moving average, the harder it might be to break through it. And now, check it out. The moving average is up here and the price is down here. So what that it tells or what that means in my mind is that it's going to take longer for the price to actually start getting bullish. We're going to want to see kind of like how we were in this area where the price was really close. We're going to want to see that price get closer. Maybe we can bounce at this level, start going sideways again, then the moving average could come in, then we can get more, um, then it'll be easier for us to break that moving average and break the trend line going to the upside. The other thing that I was looking at is we're going, we're on the daily time frame. We have resistance right here, resistance right here. Let's go ahead and fix this trend line, something like this. Um, you could do this on the four hour, maybe two. I think the daily would be good though. Once we break this trend line going to the upside, then I think we can start getting more bullish. And like I was saying, hopefully we can find support on these, one of these areas, maybe right here or maybe right here. The 180 moving average kind of is lining up with that Fibonacci retracement level sitting at around dot one, one, four, two, one, the 78% level. Um, you could see this 180 moving average coming right here. This is another thing. 180 moving averages are pretty much do the same thing. They're just in a bigger time frame or a bigger time period, should I say? But we could find support on that as well. I mean, the fact that we're above it still is better than being below it. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll come down, hit that, and then maybe we could get a bounce on this one. But if we're testing it, that's not really that great. We do, it would be better to be far away from the 180, or starting to pull away from the 180 moving average as opposed to coming into it. So let's see what happens with that as well. Um, but yeah, the other thing that I've been kind of wondering is I wonder if we're forming some sort of like 
falling wedge pattern, something like this maybe, because if we're doing that, then that might be, I mean, it's, it's still a downtrend, but at the end of it, it should be a good pattern to trade. So yeah, I was just kind of playing with that idea too. I mean, we have this resistance and this resistance or support, should I say, and then um, I guess you would kind of argue that you would pull it right here. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, we'll see if what kind of develops, though, in the meantime. Uh, I, like I said, the next level that I'm looking at is this previous bottom right here. And that target, I don't remember where exactly where it is, but you can rewind. But I'm looking at the previous, my limit orders sitting at this previous bottom right here, sitting at dot one two seven four three, as long as we are trending to the downside. So yeah, check out my last video, uh, some of the stuff that I was talking about. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.